Uh, the floor is yours. Okay. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, Welcome, Farid. Thank you very much, uh, Ignacio, for these uh, events, uh, for the for the administration and preparation of the everything. Uh, my name is Farid from FRMC Solutions. FRMC is a uh, small uh, firm, consulting firm and technology company based in Toronto, in Canada. Canada. Uh, here is a, now is the morning time, 10:30 a.m. I know some of your guys is the morning time. Some other guys are from in the evening time. But welcome to all the attendees for these presentations. Just um, I wanted to briefly introduce our company. FRMC is um, a tech company. We um, design, develop, and implement uh, innovative, non-destructive solutions for condition assessment of the concrete structures, concrete piles, deep foundations, and civil infrastructure facilities. Today is um, today. I'm going to uh, present. Okay. Do you have my presentation? So today is I'm going to present the uh, quality control of the foundation and parts. Uh, using the non-destructive uh, uh, methods and technologies. Um, Sorry, you know, Farid, we can't see your presentation. You can see? No, we cannot. Okay, let me... You have to share and then select the window. Here, here we go. Now it is there. Now it's... Yes, thank you. <laughs> Sorry. So... Um, that's our, my first slide for the presentation, the quality control of the foundation and parts. So using the non-destructive testing methods. Um, what is the pile and dim function foundation? What's the functionality? You know, uh, superstructures uh, normally have, has a heavy loads and we need to transmit the heavy loads from superstructure to very, very strong base. Uh, that's the reason we use the piles and deep foundation, especially in a condition we have the poor uh, ground, uh, the condition of the soils, ground at the very, uh, very level, at the first stage and level is a poor, but is not strong enough to carry out the superstructure loads. We need some elements, look like the nails, piles, or some uh, mats, the concrete surface like the deep foundations to transmit the heavy load of the superstructures to the substrate uh, layers of the soils that are strong enough to carry out the superstructural loads. Okay, these structural elements are very, very important because if you put your structure on a very loose and poor uh, foundations, uh, any structure will be collapsed at some points or will be seriously damaged. We need to control the quality of our foundation and parts before building up our superstructures. That's the reason we need to uh, some technology, some methods uh, look like the non-destructive testing methods in order to evaluate the condition, the quality of the parts and foundations after construction or even in the existing structure. Let's say you have an old structure, you want to upgrade it, you want to increase the load, you need to know about the real condition of the uh, piles and foundations in order to make sure that piles and uh, that existing piles and foundations can carry out the superstructure loads. That's the reason we are going to find the solutions look like the non-destructive testing in order to evaluate the condition of the, our piles and deep foundations. There are a lot of type of the non destructive testing methods we can use for condition assessment of our piles, our deep foundations. Uh, some of them are based on the stress waves, 
Some of them are based on the thermal condition assessment. Some of them are based on the electromagnetic methods. But today I wanted to focus our presentations to non-destructive methods based on the stress waves. Stress waves look like the acoustic waves. The waves that can be generated when you heat the element by your hammer. When you heat the by element by your hammer, that hammer impact generates the stress waves the stress waves can travel through reflected of boundaries like the defects, like the toes, like the um, back end. And based on the uh, reflection that we collect with your sensors, you can understand about the condition of your materials. In general, if we want to stress waves, uh, we divide it to two main group categories. The first one is transmission of stress waves. The second category is a pulse echo methods. Um, let's kick a start from the transmission of the stress waves. The philosophy, the concept behind this technology is very easy to understand. So you have here a resource. A resource like, looks like, the, for example, the hammer impact or any, any other resource can generate the acoustic stress waves or acoustic waves can that acoustic waves and stress waves travel through the environment and receive in the other side of your elements um, by a receiver. Receiver can be a transducer, can be accelerometer, can be a geophone. Based on that formulation, we know about the distance and we have the transmission time of the stress waves from the resource to the receiver. Uh, we can calculate the uh, velocity. Based on the velocity, we can talk about the quality of the materials. Is it the material is a good condition or in a poor conditions? Uh, if you have a damaged sign like that, major cracks in your environments, your waves cannot uh, travel through the environment uh, directly, but because of that defects, the velocity decreased. Distance between the receiver as a source and receiver remains same, but the time of the transmission increase, and because of that, the velocity decrease. If the velocity decrease, it means your material is not in a good uh, condition. It, it is in the poor condition, and you need to take care of the uh, problem. Let's say we have a few examples here, transmission in the sound concrete, transmission in the, in the some uh, honeycomb condition, transmission in cracks. When you have a major cracks, even that transmission of the stress wave cannot happen. The stress wave never can pass the very, here, very macro crack, a huge cracks, and, and bounce and the uh, crack and reflect it off. This is the concept behind the transmission methods. Uh, which, uh, now, uh, which type of the uh, non-destructive testing methods exist uh, in market for condition assessment of the uh, concrete pores and deep foundations uh, based on the transmission of the stress waves. The, the most famous and most known technology is ultrasonic cross hole testing, which is totally based on the ASTM D6760. The concept behind that technology it's very easy to understand. Um, we need, uh, in our parts, we create a, a prefabricate two, two or three holes, or depends on the diameter, diameter of the parts, uh, the holes, and uh, we fill the holes with the water, and we send it to transmitter and receiver inside the hole. And one of these, this transducer generate the acoustic waves, the other one to receive the acoustic waves, look like that directly, a step by a step, allowing the pile access. So, okay, what happens when, when, when we send the uh, trans, uh, acoustic waves from the transmitter to the receiver, uh, we record the time. If we see the time, uh, the transmission time jump and increase a lot, it means there is a, some defect on that specific level. 
okay? Because the distance between the transmitter, uh, uh, transducer, uh, transmitter and receiver remains same along the borehole. And when the distance remains same and transmission times increase, velocity decrease. And the velocity decrease, it means there is a defect and some problem at that specific level. STMD6760 also recommend how to uh, evaluate the condition of the concrete on that specific position. Sorry. So uh, based, if you follow the ACMD6760, you can create a tomography photo in order to create a beautiful uh, image of the uh, defects at, uh, there at, at, the, at the level the transmission time increase a lot. Based on this is uh, the, the, the uh, ACMD 6760, um, uh, it's recommend at least to do a few number of the testing based on the pi diameter. For the pi diameter less than the 1000 millimeter. So at least we need to do uh, the test in three boreholes a combination of the one, two, one, three, and two, three, but for the pi diameter between the 1000 millimeter to 1400 millimeter, ASTM recommend to do at least a, this type of the configuration, let's say the uh, transmission uh, testing between one, two, one, three, one, four, and the other combination, and when your pi length and uh, file diameter increase over uh, 1500 to 2100 millimeter, such a combination of the borehole is recommended from the ASTMD 6760 for condition assessment of the, your parts. But what is the limitation of the, that technology? It has a lot of advantages. I know. I know what's the advantages. We know we can uh, we can understand about the condition of the piles based on this methodology. But any non-destructive testing has own limitations. The limitation for this technology is needs to prefabricated boreholes. It means you need to put some tubes uh, along the pile lamp uh, in order to have the boreholes after pouring the concrete. So. Because of the construction issue, sometimes there is a risk of the damage to borehole during constructions. Let's say the, 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 the borehole, it might be uh, damaged, inclined uh, be, during the pouring the concrete, and when it's inclined, uh, your sensors cannot uh, keep the same distance of, uh, at, uh, along the pile length, and because of the change of the lens, we don't know the velocity we collect as represent correctly the condition of the concrete or not. The other issue is, is this method is a little bit expensive compared to other technologies and difficult to be executed for existing parts. Let's say you have the parts in your structure, existing structure, you want to uh, assist the present condition of the parts in order to increase, for example, the uh, superstructure loads, it's very, very difficult to execute this test for the existing oil and foundations. Um, it has uh, some technical issues, drilling the borehole into the parts, it takes a lot of time and sometimes it's too expensive to do the test. The other type of the uh, Pile integrity testing, which is which is work based on the concept of transmission of the stress waves, is parallel seismic. This uh, this test is uh, developed in US, but there is no any ASTM standards so far for this technology. But many companies has already used this technology for condition assessment of the piles. That this technology you need to drill. Uh, it's very good for the existing piles. You, you can drill a borehole near to your piles, not far from the uh, half a meter. Uh, we'll fill it with the water to make sure there's a good connection between the 
uh, transducer and the surrounding area. At, is at each level, you heat by hammer your pies and record the signals that travel through the pies look like that. But at the, at the level, the transmission time is when, when, when increase a lot, we, and you see the transmission, the first arrival signals uh, the, the time is increased a lot. That, that's, a, that's the position of the end of your pile tool. It's very good for finding the pile tool, but for the integrity testing, sometimes it's tricky and difficult to interpret the results because your, 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 your signals Stairs waves travel at least in two environments. One of them is in concrete, the other is a surrounding soil. We don't know the, the signal is collected by your transducer. If you see some sign of the issue, let's say a defect, we are not very sure the defect is in the surrounding soil or is in the, uh, in the, the concrete directly. And so, but for, for, for measuring the uh, ex length of the existing parts, as one of the good tests. Again, if, if this technology also has own limitations, uh, it needs uh, drilling borehole. Drilling borehole sometimes in some countries, in some job sites, too expensive. Um, the results not accurate for integrity testing, as I told you, because the stress waves actually travel through two different environments concrete pies and the surrounding materials. If we see the issue in your signals, we cannot say that issue can 100% correlated to the, any issue in your concrete or in your surrounding soils. Uh, highly dependent on the soil profile. You know, it's the geology along the pies, the, the, the uh, soil profile changes a lot. We, 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 we can, I have seen a project, we had a project in, uh, I work with some of colleagues on that project. Uh, for just 10 meter pies, the soil profile changed five times from very poor condition to very solid rocks. And so such a such condition makes it difficult, the data interpretation uh, using that technology. And it's expensive sometimes because it needs at least to drill few boreholes near the pies for uh, condition assessment of the parts. The other category we have for condition assessment of the parts is pulse echo. As it means the concept behind this technology, again, it's very easy to understand. Uh, you have the resource, the resource you have in the surface, it sends the signals uh, signals uh, reflected of the defects and reflected of the boundary. The first peak here in the signal is emitted by your hammer impact, for example. The second one is the reflection from the, from the defects um, in, the mid, uh, in the midlands. And the last one is a reflection from the back end. Based on the very simple calculation here we have, we can uh, find the location of the defects or we can uh, understand about the thickness of the materials and the boundary we have. This is the concept behind this technology. The most famous pile integrity testing, which, is, uh, which works on based on the pulse echo concept, is a low strain impact integrity testing based on ASTMD 5882. Uh, it's low strain because uh, you use a very, very uh, hand, uh, a handheld uh, you know, hammer for heating your pile head. When you heat the pile head, the, signal, uh, the stress wave is generated, travel through the environment, reflected off boundary, and collected by your sensor near uh, at the surface of the pies. Um, the calculation is very easy to implement. We know about, we have estimation of the uh, wave speed inside the concrete, in poor concrete, uh, normal concrete, and very good concrete. Normally it's range from uh, 3,500 uh, 3, meter to uh, 4,500 meter per second. 
and based on that calculation and transmission time from impact to co collecting the stress scrapes near surface, you can uh, you can measure the length of your pies, the foundations, or you can uh, understand about the location of the defects and problems in this uh, in your materials. What is the application of that? Uh, it can be used to identify defects in the pies, evaluate, uh, evaluate cross-section and length of pies, determine unknown lengths, evaluate continuity of pies, or evaluate consistency of, uh, consistency of the pile materials. This is a few application of this technology. The beauty of this technology is not really expensive. It's very easy to implement. Just you need to put your sensor near the surface uh, and hit by hammer. That hammer generate the signals. If you collect the signals correctly and do some data interpretation, so it, it gives you a lot of information. It's, it's really a cost effective that that's, uh, that, that, that that's for quality control of the parts. Again, see where, again, the concept here is shows. Uh, it's a different type of the uh, defects we can uh, find about while using the pile integrity testing based on the ACMD 5882. It's an intact pile, it's a pile with the necking, it's a pile with the uh, cracks in the middle. Let's say the cracks, cool joints, uh, construction joints, or any other type of the joints here. Um, or even the uh, budgeting, we can, if, if based on the signals we call it and the data interpretation, we can understand about the budgeting. Budgeting is not necessarily bad for points, but again, based on the ASTMD 5882, it's categorized as the uh, defects for the points and the foundations. What type of the uh, points? Uh, can, can, th th this technology for, can be used for what type of the parts? For the uh, structural columns, because the, the concept behind this technology works based on the uh, compression uh, mode of deformation. But so for many uh, uh, slender structural members, even for a structural column, uh, you can use the, again, this concept for integrity testing for driving concrete pipes, for casting place concrete pipes, for concrete filled steel pipe pipes, timber pipes. But ASTM also never recommend to use the te this technology for uh, pile sheets, for H and for H steel pile, for 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 for, uh, for the pipe pipes that not filled with concrete. But these are the few. Uh, type of the parts that never this uh, ACMD 5882 recommend to use the uh, part integrity testing. Okay. The fact is, if you want to do the part testing, for example, but so uh, anytime you can go in your job site, collect your data and come back and sit in your office and do your data interpretation. But if you want to have a very good data, the meaningful data, you need to implement the test in a correct way in order to create a successful pile integrity testing. There are a few tricky things you need to consider in any pile integrity testing. Uh, we need to uh, smooth uh, the surface, the contact surface between the sensor and uh, the sur uh, pile surface with the grinder. You don't need to grind uh, all of the pile head, just the location, uh, the, uh, the location that the sensor will be attached to the pile surface. Um, you need to remove the debris, poor concretes, uh, contaminated materials, in order to make sure there is a good contact between the sensors uh, for, for, in order to receive a good quality um, signals. And for, for good contact, you can use some bonding materials. Bonding materials are not really expensive, like the petroleum gel 
the most famous is a Vaseline or potty or wax or any type of the uh, bonding materials just to make sure the trans the sensor uh, is a, in a very good contact with your pile head based on the ASTM also uh, never hit uh, you should hit the, the hammer impact near to uh, the, uh, your sensors within the distance of the 300 millimeter from uh, from your sensors at that location. Never go far, never go very, very close to the sensor. Keep the distance of the, at the uh, around the 300 millimeters. And never put your sensor near, very, near to the uh, pile edge because of the because of the edge effect that uh, that cause again uh, difficulty to interpret your results the best way is to try to put the transducer in the center and hit the ground in a distance of around 200 within the 300 millimeters that's the, that that's a few tricky uh, things you need to take care of that if you want to create a successful poly integrity testing based on the ACMD uh, 5882 for basic data analysis, you need to a little bit to understand about a few uh, concepts. The concept of the impedance. Impedance, it means the difference between the materials. The impedance, what does it mean? You have the concrete piles. Concrete piles is surrounded by different materials and different type of the soil. Some of them is the poor soil, some, sometimes it's a crashed rock, sometimes it's a, it's a, it's a uh good 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 rock and also there is a voice and cold joints in your pies where cold, cold, cold joints or voids it's a full of the air or sometimes it's empty but again it's a it's a difference between the concrete and the voids this is called the impedance impedance is a parameter is um uh, they can define uh, based on the uh cross-sectional area, uh, young dynamic modulus, and the wave speed, the, wave, the, wave, the stress waves that generated by your hammer impact, and uh, that, that, that influenced the impedance in these materials. That little concept helps you for basic data interpretation. Let's check it, for example, in this table for the data, for basic understanding about the data interpretations. The first one is the thread piles, free end, and the lens are as expected. The first peak is a peak of the hammering pack for generating the stress wave. The last peak is come back from the ends. When your uh, stress wave travel through and reflected off the ends, that creates uh, such a type, uh, such such peak in your environment. If your end is fixed, let's say, for example, in, the, uh, in a condition, your pulse stands on the rock, uh, so the reflection uh, switches to the downward, the upward reflections, because of the end is not free, is a, is a fix. But what's the difference between them? As you know, the impedance is equal to the modulus of elasticity, multiply the surface, divided by wave speed. Okay, a strong rock, rock has a higher uh, model of elasticity compared to the concrete. Because of the switch, the impedance, increase the impedance from concrete to rock, your peak switched. Uh, from the negative peak, it switched to the positive, the positive um, uh, peak. It helps you to understand at least your end of pause stands on what? A stand, it's a free end or it stands on the rock. The other example we have, sorry about that, here, let's say for example for that specific case here, what we have, the first peak is, uh, the first peak is from impact, the other is, is in the free end, but the peak in the middle is because of the increase in cross section. Again, we know the impedance is equal to model of plasticity multiplied in the cross section divided by wave speed. Here at this location, your cross section increase. It means the impedance from the first part to second part increase and we see the positive uh, peak 
The other example is here, for example, from this cross section, from a big cross section to the small cross section. The first is the, again the hammer impact. The, 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 the third one is the reflection from the back end. From bigger cross section to a lower cross section, impedance decrease and we see the negative uh, peak in the middle. But the reality is the uh, last one because the, it's difficult to find the pause very, very straight, but the pause normally has a crash, uh, the cross section is changed along the pylons, but it has an irregular, irregular shape, but between the, between the first uh, peak because of the impact and the last one, normally we see some minor peaks. These minor peaks okay, is correlated not because of the defect, it's be correlated because of the irregular shape of the uh, pies. These minor peaks can be used in order to, for, uh, for, for pile um, profile analysis. Sometimes the clients needs to know how the um, cross-section change along the pile uh, to make sure they have a, they, it's in good condition or not. Let's say think about that the necklin naked effect and uh, this this profile analysis helps you to uh, to localize the location of the uh, neck i wanted just to show you a few example of the uh, pile integrity results from some project that we collected let's see uh, that, that 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 backs to the um, this 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 impact is uh, the peak is because of the impact. The the second impact means that pause uh, from inter integrity perspective it was okay, but also stands on the rock. We can, we can, we came back to the contractor and asked to the data about the soil profile and the contractor proved that that pause should stands on the uh, very very good rock. Uh, based on the uh, survey they did through the borehole and the data they have from the soil profile. The other example of that, let's say for example, um, it, we, we got this result from the damage parts. The first impact was, uh, the, the first peak was because of the hammer impact. The last one was the reflection from the pile tool, but it, it's the reflection in the middle uh, can be correlated to loss in cross-section or any defects. But at least we know between the uh, impact and end of pause, we have something. But we need to come back and figure out what we have that's such a, uh, such a high amplitude peaks between the hammer impact and between the end of the parts. I show you the other example from the other project. Uh, again, the first one was correlated to the, uh, to the impact, uh, due to impact. The last one is from the PITO based on the construction record. And we saw uh, this peak in the middle. It was a little bit um, amplified compared to the reflection from the pile ends. But we, we, can, we came back to the data from the construction records. And we understood at this location, at the depth of near to six to seven, it was the location, uh, the surrounding soil switched from the very poor source to the uh, rock. It was not really, really hard rock, but it was uh, uh, the rock with, uh, with a good quality. But uh, based on our interpretation, that we think was uh, correlated to the switch from the you know, very uh, switch from the uh, very good, uh, very poor soil condition to the good rock. When you go to the data analysis using the uh, ASCMD 5882 for pile integrity testing, any piece of the information helps you to better uh, understand your condition of your piles to better interpret your results. Uh, if you know about the concrete strength, it's very good because you know about the quality of your concrete, you can estimate your wave speed. If, if it's poor concrete, we choose the wave speed near to 
3500. If you are going with a very, very good concrete, we, we choose the 4500 uh, meter per second for the wave speed. But the normal concrete, the most of the piles uh, sit in the normal conditions and just normal concrete. But uh, estimation of the 4000 meter per second for the wave speed is a good est estimation for uh, initiation of your uh, data interpretation. The other idea to know about the pi diameter, because you should know about the ratio of the uh, length to the pi diameter. Uh, we never uh, recommend to use uh, the ASTM D5882 pile integrity testing for the ratio higher than uh, 35. It means if you are going uh, to do the pile integrity uh, on a pile with diameter of the one meter, keep the results that would be reliable when your pile length is less than 35 meter. Uh, if, if, the increase, if the ratio increase from the 35, uh, the other mode of deformations, like the bending deformation, is get involved in your signals and make it difficult a little bit your data interpretation. Also, the soil effect, the friction effect of the surrounding soils and concrete, it increased a lot and that might cause um, difficulty for data interpretation. Try to keep, uh, use the pile integrity testing, ACMD 5882, uh, for testing piles uh, less than the ratio of LT, L to D of 30 or 35. But initial estimation of, of your pile length is very helpful. If you know, for example, are you going to working on the piles in the order of the 10 meter, in the order of the 20 meter, or in order of the 30 meter? Because sometimes in your pile graph, the graph you see, you see a lot of minor peaks. If you have some idea of uh, where should be the uh, end and pile toe, it helps you to better understand about the minor peaks there is a between your pile toe and the impact. Um, initial estimation of the wave speed, it can be uh, helps again, but the having idea about the concrete strength helps you to have uh, some uh, initial estimation about your pile, your, your wave speed. Again, it might need to adjust a little with your velocity uh, in order to make sure uh, your, the peak you see from your pile ends is uh, fall exactly in the exact location, uh, fall exactly in the uh, expectations. Having information about the soil profile is really again important to know um, how do your soil profile along pile is changed. It's, change, it's just a single uh, soil condition or switch from the very, very uh, poor condition to very good condition. All of them having, uh, uh, having the idea how to change, uh, it, it helps you to better understand the minor peaks between the pile toe and, in the, uh, and the impact. The other things at any project you need to you know is the construction record. Let's start with, this, uh, with your contractor to understand how the, uh, the uh, they, they pour the concrete. Sometimes, uh, because of the some construction issue, they stop in the middle of the pouring for a few hours and they continue the pouring. But in such a condition, there is a risk of having a cold joint, a construction joint a bit in the middle. That cold joint is one of the major integrity issue. Let's, I, had, I, I was talking with one of my clients he brought me uh, um, he brought me a few signals uh, recorded in one of the uh, pies. He, he, he told me he expect to see the, the major reflection in the pile and at the depth of the uh, 20 meter. But all, and all the signals shows, uh, showed uh, the, 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 a very, very major reflection at the depth of the seven meter. Uh, I asked him to come back to the contractor to talk about the construction records. A few days after, he come back to me with the construction history, and based on the data he collected, um, our our first uh, understanding was uh, there is uh, the the peak at the depth of the seven meter can be correlated to the construction joints, 
because of the delay the contractor had uh, during the uh, pouring the uh, concrete. But having every piece of the information in, in this space you see helps you to better understand about uh, your, your signals you collected and helps you to better uh, interpret the results. That, is, that specific testing has own limitations and so we, we should be aware, about the, aware of the limitation of this technology always. Never you cannot use, uh, you cannot use the pile integrity of the ASTMD 5882 over pile cap uh, because uh, always you need to put your sensors directly on the, uh, on the pile head, a direct contact you need. Um, this does uh, provide you no information on bearing capacity. Uh, this, this cannot be used for integrity uh, below uh, a crack that uh, crosses the entire uh, cross section, let's say the construction joints, uh, construction joint, major joints. Uh, if you have the part of the 20 meter and you have a joints uh, at the depth of, let's say, for example, the seven meter, this uh, test cannot help you to understand about the integrity of the uh, parts below the depth of the seven meter because of the that major construction joints. Uh, sometimes uh, pile may not be evident in a long pile. Uh, highly variable pipes, for example, or in soil that exhibit relatively high frictions. That's that 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 that, that, um, that in that specific item I'm talking about the L to D ratio. When you have uh, LTD ratio of the over 30, 35, uh, your part is lo totally look like the nail, surrounding effects, different mode of the deformation come in place uh, in between. And so all of them uh, makes difficult the data interpretation. Keep, try to keep your testing also at uh, always for pause with the L to D ratio less than 30, 35. Thank you very much. It was my presentation. And uh, thank you for uh, listening to my presentation. Uh, I wanted to pass the tribune to uh, Ignacio if he has uh, more, uh, if he has something to add on the top of my presentation. Also for coordinating the question and answering uh, session. I would be here for the, for the next 20, min uh, 20 minutes in order to help you for your question. Thank you very much. We have some questions, uh, Farid, from the public. Uh, this question comes from Fernando Monterroso. He's asking, what equipment you recommend to make the low strain integrity testing of piles? Okay, what, what type of the equipment? Yes. So you may also read it in the chat, the questions. Oh uh, yeah, let me open up the uh, open the chat. chat. There you go. Oh uh -huh. yeah, yeah, I got it. So very good. So um, in market you can find uh, different type of because uh, different type of the uh, techno. It's not a different type of technology. Different suppliers provide the uh, pile integrity testing materials for testing the pies. iPad is one of the example of that. So it's, it's a wireless sensor technology. Uh, it's, it's totally, um, uh, let's say for example, it's totally wireless. It, the communication with your data acquisition unit, the tablets and the sensor is through the uh, Bluetooth. And so everything is embedded inside that. You can place it on your pile head, uh, heat by your hammer, and collect your data in your tablet and continue your data interpretation for that. Also, there are some other competitors in the market in the US, in the East Asia, in uh, European companies. Uh, so it's not difficult to find that. Just if you go in your Google and Google it, the pile integrity tester device, uh, you will see a, a different type of and different brands. And based on the reviews and comments in the market, some of them are 
are very good and some of them uh, are not really reliable but i'm not here to uh, i'm not here here I'm, I'm not in a position to uh, judge about the which competitor is good which competitor is not good but uh, i'm pretty sure you can find a lot of information and reviews uh, through googling uh, in, in your in your in your uh, about the quality of the materials different supplier uh, sell in the markets we have another question here, which is quite interesting with Mr. Guerrero. He says, he's asking, in pile integrity test, what is the maximum diameter of the pile to be tested? Mm -hmm. So and what, what would be your assessment to the smallest one as well? Okay. Let's Tell us the limits of the technology, please. Okay. Uh, I never... Uh, the, the, the fact is uh, the pi diameter, uh, the fact is the technology we are using is relying on the uh, compression mode of deformation. As long as we have a slender structure member uh, that uh, can, uh, in that slender structure member, the dominant mode of deformation remains always the compression mode of deformation, we can do the pile integrity testing on that structure. Okay. Now I'm talking about the diameter. So uh, diameter depends, uh, depends on the L to D ratio. Uh, again, let's say for example, if you are talking about the pile of the uh, 10 meter uh, with the L to D of the um, 30, uh, L to D of the 30, uh, it goes to 30 meter, L to D 30 divided by D, it's, we can go up to one and a half meter, not more. And so if you are working with, the, let's say, uh, the pile of, pile of the uh, 10 meter, again, with the L to D of ratio of the 30, we can go a little bit uh, over one and a half meter for that specific pile. But I never recommend use in very, very, very huge pile. But up to one and a half meter, in most of the case, it works very well. The other things we need to consider is the ASTM D5882 recommend if your pile diameter is over half a meter, uh, you need to do the test at least at three different locations of your parts. It means uh, if you are working with a pile of the six, six, 600 millimeters, you need to place your transducer at three different locations at least. Do your uh, pile integrity testing uh, and check it. your pile integrity test in three different locations. The smallest one, let's say, I never recommend use this technology for micro piles, but again, uh, diameter over half the 30 centimeter, 45 centimeter can be used, but never goes with that technology for the micro points. Excellent. I have a question and a burning one. Uh, we, we spoke here about this in the past, but why do you think that the pile integrity testing is not such a, uh, a test that is expanded and done all over the place? I mean, for example, in the European code, if you do PID test, the simple test that you just explained to us, you can increase the structural capacity of a pile 25%. Yes, exactly. Why isn't it, uh, you know, something that is so simple to use, uh, uh, you can do it to all the piles, no problem. Uh, of course, you need an engineer to interpret the data, you know, like most of those things. But imagine you can increase your structural strength 25%, therefore, when you calculate the pile, you can start saving 25% of your piles. Why yeah. is the, my question is, why isn't this Farid done more readily if it's so much money involved here in saving? What is our problem? Okay, the problem, <laughs> again, it's very difficult to talk about this problem, but uh, it, it might have different reason because uh, the first thing is the knowledge. Knowledge, for example, the engineers to know how to interpret the results. But sometimes engineer, uh, for the engineer it's difficult to, to realize on the data, but 
if they have experience, if they know how to do, how to implement correctly the test, uh, if they know how to uh, collect the data, how to keep the safety, how to interpret the results, they will reach reliable results. That, that's a, it might be the first reason because of the uh, knowledge. The other thing is um, construction market is huge. It's everywhere worldwide. But believe me, some countries in world, uh, since, since 2017, I'm working for the IPIL for our pile integrity testing. But I face with a lot of engineering and uh, construction market guys. They don't have any idea what's the pile integrity testing. They don't know. There is such a test in the market that can help them to improve the quality of the pies, they, they increase the superstructure loads if they did this test. But so uh, I, I, it's, it's, some of them, again, is because of the la la lack of the knowledge. They don't know that such a testing is, exists in the market. The other things is um, Maybe we need to <laughs> talk more. We have more many webinar with evolve why just to uh, let them know uh, there is a, such a technology. Yeah, that technology helps them to uh, save a lot of money. Uh, single, just single testing, it's, it's worse to do. But at least, at least that at the end they know about the quality of their parts and they 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 will make sure they are, they are, they are, they are constructing a very safe structure. Well, that's what fair mean? enough. Yeah. Knowledge. Uh, I, I believe we need to spread then. The, mm -hmm. the key would you would say that is sharing knowledge so people understand that there we have a technology available, and and for you young guys, you can use a telephone with your uh, Bluetooth stuff and uh, listen to the music at the same time, maybe like mm -hmm. an iPod or something like that. Mm -hmm. I had another burning question here, Farid. Yes. Because you're an expert, uh, I mean, you're a doctor in non-destructive testing, and we have you here for this next minutes. I wanted to ask you a question. Uh, are piles okay when you test them? I mean, can you give us like a, a ballpark figure of the percentage or the or the or the ranges of the piles that are wrong in and when you do the testings and when you do the when you perform this type of test? Is it five percent of the piles? 50%, 30%. How many of the piles that you test are wrong and, and that have uh, procedures in construction that needed to be changed to improve them? Again, having a number worldwide uh, is very difficult because construction quality, country to country change. Let's say North America, they are very good in construction. In some other countries, let's say develop, uh, developing countries, uh, in my home countries as well, sometimes they, they are not good really for delivering a very good job. But uh, let's say in Canada or North America, uh, when they go in the job site, um, one pies from between 10, they need to come back and again uh, to figure out is the any issue for that or not. But so, uh, because the pile integrity testing we have uh, is not the just uh, end solutions. It's an initial testing. Means, for example, you're going to the job site, you do the test, you, okay, you, you make sure the quality of the parts. If you find the parts uh, that they had some issue, you, your flag, you raise the flag on that specific parts for further investigations. Let's say, for example, because that technology helps you to understand there is a defect, but you cannot say what's the type of the defect exactly. It's a, it's a, a neckling effect, it's a voids, or what, what's a peak? But, it, but at least helps you to raise the flag. That pause shows us something, but if you want to know further, we need to more advanced testing to in order to show what is the, exactly the problem. I have seen in, some, in a project, uh, one of our uh, customers delivered, he, he has a concern about the boys. He collected the data, he applied to some uh, profile um, analysis, and uh, he recommended the contractor at the depth of X, there is a something in the pause, but 
the project was very, very important and uh, contractor start digging and excavating to reach to the same level and they understood yes at that specific level there is a major, they, that was a problem of the soil inclusion and after that they come back to the consultant engineer to, to co consultant prepare them and some remedial, remedial action and some improvement in order that, to keep that forest in a safe condition what we have another question here uh, it's from Mr. Jacupi. Okay. He asks, does steel conditions in the reinforced pile affect the signal? He's asking about coated steel or corrosion products inside a pile. Does this affect the results from the pile integrity testing? Uh, are you talking about the corrosion of the acid rebar? He's, he's asking about the reinforcing. Imagine that you have reinforcing inside a pile that is uh -huh. uh, coated or maybe has a corruption product uh, to protect yeah. uh, steel from uh, the sea. Uh, and yes. does this affect uh, your test? Yes. Um, corrosion uh, needs, uh, ha uh, needs three, three components to happen. First one is the uh, moisture. Second one is oxygen. The other ones, uh, something like the uh, catalyzer uh, to speed up the corrosion of the acid rebounds. Okay, so um, if we have the corrosion, we expect to have the corrosion near the surface because the near the surface, uh, near the ground level, we have the combination of the moisture, we have the oxygen and some catalyzer. When we go in the depth, we don't expect to, the, uh, to have the corrosion in the pause because uh, of the lack of the oxygen, okay? In the, let's say, depth of 10 meter, 20 meter. If, if one of these com components uh, is not exist in your, uh, your, your, your materials, corrosion never uh, starts. But we, we, we are scared about the corrosion near to the ground level. The other fact is uh, the transducer, the sensor is used in for pile integrity testing is, is very low frequency uh, uh, sensor. Low frequency um, helps you to understand about the condition assessment of depth from one meter to, to let's say the, 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 the depth of X. If you want to know about the condition of the, uh, concrete near surface, you need the higher frequency sensors. I don't expect the technology like the uh, IPAR get affected by the corrosion of the steel rebar near to surface because they have the low frequency signals. The, it, this, this sensor never collect the um, high frequency signals that are reflected, that reflected off the uh, events near surface. We have a comment here from Mr. RMG. He says that uh, he first thanks you because you're the expert. Thank you, Farid. Thank you very much. <laughs> this is the most repeated question here in the chat. Uh, but he asks, he tells us that in the Middle East, you have to do pit tests on in a hundred percent of the piles, uh -huh. and you have to do in 10% of the piles, cross hole testing. Yes. How would you do this two tests at the same time? And how do you do, what is your experience in Canada in regard to pit and cross hole? Okay. Well, what we do uh, we, the, uh, here, the, the cross hole and pit, um, the, pit is the first test as performed. But any engineers, let's say, for example, they contact the service suppliers, contractor, to ask again for the, to do the pie testing on 100%. For what, for, for the pies they have concern about, for example, because of the pit results, they ask for more advanced testing. That advanced testing is a cross uh, I cannot say it's a 10% or 5%, but they, they go based on the result of the pit. If the pit shows 
even more than 10% of the pies needs the cross hole testing, more advanced testing, they go for the more advanced testing. It's based so what on you're telling us is that you always put the pipes for the big piles. Mm -hmm. You do pin the big piles, yeah. one. And then if you find a suspicious pile, you do the cross hole. Yeah. So that's how you, ma you mix both, yes? Yes. Excellent. There's another question here is uh, from Mr. Sundar. Mm -hmm. He asks, while testing, while, pile, while pit testing is so important, what are the uh, aspects to consider to, be, to make it more effective? What are the things you have to keep in mind and, the, and your tips from your professional practice? So from professional practice, let's say any non-destructive testing we want to do, we need to do the uh, uh, test in a correct way. Let's say, for example, uh, pit test has two phases. Phase one is executing test. The second phase is the data interpretation. In executing test, they need to take care of, let's say, never uh, put, 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 put the sensor on a flat surface. They need to prepare the surface, uh, remove the debris, uh, remove the com contaminated materials, poor concrete. They want, they need to, uh, we need to make sure that we place the sensor exactly on a solid and flat surface. And so we need to make sure about the bonding. There is a good bonding, at least we use some Vaseline petroleum gel to make sure the sensor is uh, banded to the surface correctly. The other things we need to, we, we need to uh, uh, stay away the edge, never, never put your transducer near to the edge. And so follow the ASTM procedure exactly. That's, that's the things we need to take care of that. In the data interpretation phase, uh, we need at the earliest stage, I recommend to study your job site before going deep. Let's say, for example, ask the contractor as much as information is available. Let's say for the compressive strength of concrete. For their estimation, the, the order of the uh, piles, let's, uh, they are talking about the pile of the 10 meter or they are talking about the pile of the 30 meter. What, what's, what's their expectation? Construction records, make sure, uh, some, make sure something like the stopping the pouring concrete and not happens. Uh, what was the issue? Type of the pile they are working, it's, it's, it's a pile of the casting place, it's a pile of the uh, injection of the groot, it's a frank, a frank leak pile. What's the type of the piles that are working with that? So any other piece of the information they can collect, they need to collect from the contractor. The third stage is they need to sit in front of the graph, try to find the first and the reflection from the impact and reflection from the pie toe, the remaining in the pit thing, they need the remaining, the pigs, with the information they have in hands. If they if say if see the reflection between the end of pile and the head, pile head, uh, a major reflection, they need to come back to see, for example, what is the soil profile at this location? Is its soil profile is changing? What is construction mentioned about any uh, issues during the uh, pouring the concrete or try to find the correlation, correlation between the piece of the information in how they have in hands with the pics they see in their signals. This is the procedure I recommend and I use. Mohammed has another question and this is a quite interesting one. It's in regard about the PID results. How do, what is the, the acceptance threshold to consider uh, a pile that is safe or not. In term, he's asking specifically in terms of weight speed and length, uh, and, or, or put it in another way. How do you classify piles from your, uh, the response from the pit test? Do you give it an A, B, C, very good, uh, okay, or uh, whatever? Can you tell us a bit about this, please? So, um, what we do, uh, from engineering perspective, we have two things: as pass or uh, or not. Here is not the classification, because uh, the fact is, 
if you see just your peak from your pile end, that's okay. If you see a major uh, reflex, that major reflex raised to asking more questions because it's a limitation of the technology. You see the reflection, you cannot say that reflection, what is it exactly? You need to figure out what is exactly. It's because of the construction or because of the change in soil profile. Each reflection between the pile head and pile toe tell us something. We need to figure out to understand to each, uh, each reflection. If you, if you can correlate that reflection in between of the pile head and pile end with the, some things like the soil profile, something, uh, let's say the bottling and things like that, okay, that's okay. You can say that that's, that part is accepted. But if, if you cannot correlate it, or you feel it's a, there is a defect, it's, it's, you need to raise your flag because pulse is really important. If you superstructure transmit this heavy loads through the pulse to the, uh, to the uh, strong substrate, it means pulse is work based on two facts. The, 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 it's a, when it, 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 it works on based on the friction. We, we rely on the friction. If the engineer calculates they need the friction of the 10 meter in order to carry out the loads, the pile of the, the, it has a cold joint or a construction joint in the middle in the, at the depth of five meter, it's not the pile of the 10 meter, it's a pile of the five meter. It's really important to let them know you feel there is something at that point because the best superstructure on the poor piles will be collapsed or at least uh, settled or with, with damage. And they need to raise the plan. Okay. And here is, uh, I think, the last question because uh, it's about uh, what the, is the age that you can perform this test? After how many days in concrete can you perform the test? So very important to, me, to follow the ASTM D5882 procedure. ASTM tells us seven days after pouring concrete or if you are you are sure that compressive strength of concrete has already passed 75% percentage of the uh, design uh, strength. Let's say, for example, uh, you are at the, the concrete has been already uh, poured uh, four days ago, and you, you go to the lab and ask about the compressive strength of the concrete existing right now, for a concrete of the 20, 20 MPA, if they let, them know, uh, let you know that that concrete has already passed the compressive range of the 50 MPA, 15 MPA, that's the time you can go and do your testing. Seven days, or if your concrete reached the 75 percentage of design compressive range. Okay. Well, uh, thank you everybody for uh, joining us and thank you especially Farid for your time and, and the time preparing this excellent thank presentation. You very much. What I will do, uh, I, I have some requests here from people that wanted to have this uh, presentation. Once it starts to convert into MP3, I will publish it in, uh, in YouTube and I'll make sure that you have a link and I'll give you the MP3 file, MP4 file, so you can have it uh, available for you. Thank you very much for your time as well. Thank you for listening to my presentation. Uh, you can reach out to our company, F4MC, at any time uh, through the info at f4mc.com. Feel free, if you have any question, just shoot us an email. You have our contact information in our website. Website is uh, f4mc.com. Uh, anytime, if you feel uh, you have uh, you have something interesting, uh, you want, uh, you, please share with us. We we, we try to educate your uh, the market, and also we try uh, to teach from market. 
uh, it's not we are not uh, this super ended knowledgeable people. We always learn from our end user and our customers and clients. That that's a way. It's a two way education. Thank you very much to all Thank of you. And I hope to see you in the next one. Maybe with your new products, Farid, you can impress yes. us with your new inventions. It's coming uh, soon. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward for the East Tunnel uh, tool to measure thickness inside of tunnel for concrete. Yeah. So when you're ready, please make me know that because uh, I have plenty of people who are really interested in this. Oh, very good, very good. Good to, good to, good to hearing that. But so, we will really soon. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure you will have the, our next product soon in our shelf. Take care, everybody, and thank you very much. Thank you. Over and bye bye.